Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we will be talking about binary fission and genetic recombination of prokaryotic cells. Let's start with binary fission. Binary fission is a process that prokaryotic cells use to carry out cell division. It is a type of asexual reproduction and is only seen in prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are single-celled organisms that do not have membrane-bound organelles, including the membrane-bound nucleus. Of the three overarching domains into which life is classified, that is, archaea, bacteria, and eukarya, archaea and bacteria fall under the category of prokaryote. Because these are single-celled organisms, each cell must be self-sufficient and should be able to protect itself. Therefore, prokaryotes have a cell wall in addition to the plasma membrane. The cell wall protects them from the external environment. Additionally, because they are single-celled, their cell division, which is comparable to our mitosis, is a type of reproduction as opposed to what is considered normal reproduction of multicellular organisms like humans. Binary fission and mitosis have some similarities, but are mostly different. Let me know if you want a video on this as well, and I will be glad to make it for you. But all in all, binary fission is quite simple and takes much less time compared to mitosis. For example, some bacteria like E. coli can perform binary fission in about 20 minutes. For comparison, the whole process of mitosis from prophase all the way to telophase takes about 90 minutes. The process of binary fission. Like mitosis, binary fission starts with the duplication of cell components. The cell's single circular chromosome unwinds and replicates to form two circular chromosomes. While this is taking place, the other cell com components duplicate as well. Once the two circular chromosomes are made, they move to the opposite poles of the cell. The plasma membrane and the cell wall of the prokaryote then starts to pinch inwards at the middle of the cell, forming a septum. This is where the new cell wall starts being made. Finally, the septum splits the prokaryotic cell into two, creating two new daughter cells, each acting as its own prokaryotic cell. This is how binary fission functions. As you can see, this process does not allow prokaryotic cells to be genetically diverse. Genetic diversity is important for all living organisms as it ensures the evolution of species over time. Additionally, it ensures the longevity of a species by conferring specific advantages to members of a species with specific alleles of a gene that allows them to better adapt to changes in the environment. This is when genetic recombination of prokaryotic cells becomes important. There are three main types of genetic recombination of prokaryotic cells. They are transformation, conjugation, and transduction. All three methods increase genetic diversity of prokaryotic cells. Before we explore each, I think it would be helpful to talk about the genetic materials found in the prokaryotic cells. So here's a brief rundown of everything that will be helpful for you to know in order to understand three processes. The main genetic information that prokaryotic cell needs to survive are found in their single circular chromosome found at a place called the nucleoid. Remember, prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. So the nucleoid is just a region in the cell where the circular DNA is found. However, many prokaryotic cells also contain extra chromosomal or extra genomic materials. These are called plasmids. Plasmids carry genes that provide some sort of advantage to the cell. So they are not necessary for the cell's survival, but they can provide the cell with antibiotic resistance, 
make them more pathogenic, allow cells to produce specific toxins among more. So they give the cell a specific type of advantage. Some of these plasmids can integrate into the cell's main genetic material as well. These are called episomes. Now that we have this information, let's look at the three processes prokaryotes use to increase their genetic diversity. Number one, transformation. During transformation, prokaryotic cells pick up genetic materials that are found in their environment. They usually pick up genetic materials that have been left behind by other prokaryotes. Think about an instance where a bacteria lice and spills out its genetic content to the environment. The cell then incorporates this into its own circular chromosome, transforming the cell. Number two, conjugation. Conjugation is the transfer of genetic materials between two prokaryotic cells through cell-to-cell -cell contact. It happens like this. One of the prokaryotic cells should be able to form a pillus. This cell is called the donor cell. Cells need a very specific gene to be able to create this pillus. They are called sex factors and are found in plasmids. The most studied form of sex factor is called the fertility factor, also known as F factor. So the donor cell is referred to as the F plus cell and the recipient cell is referred to as the F minus cell. The pillars of the F plus cell attaches to the F minus recipient cell, creating a bridge between the two cells. The sex factor containing plasmid creates a copy of itself and is transferred to the recipient cell. Both cells synthesize a complementary strand to the remaining or received strand and produce a double-stranded circular plasmid. Now both are F plus cells because both contain the plasmid that contain the F factor and can behave as donor cells. This process increases genetic diversity because when the copy of the plasmid containing the F factor is being transferred to the receiving cell, other genes conferring other advantages pass along as well. This method allows for rapid acquisition of advantages such as antibiotic resistance in a colony of bacteria. Number three, transduction. Transduction is the transfer of genetic material between two prokaryotic cells via a vector. A vector is a carrier. In transduction, vectors tend to be viruses that infect bacteria. Viruses that infect a bacteria have a very specific name. They are called bacteriophages. Viruses are obligate intracellular pathogens. This means that they can only live and reproduce inside a host cell. During this process, Viruses can pick up genetic material from a prokaryotic cell that it infects. So when it moves on and infects another cell, this genetic material gets released into the new cell. These can provide additional benefits to the new host cell. This entire process is very clearly and simply explained by the little video you see on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, comment them down below. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.